Okay, so I think we're live. Are we live, everybody? Luke, are we live? Alfred, are we live? Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. I'm assuming we're live, and I'm sure Hi. assuming we're good. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the monthly uh, updates. Great to have you all back here. Lots of people coming again. We've got 462 people in the line there, which is absolutely fantastic. We hope to grow this from strength to strength over the months ahead. So uh, joining me is a partner who you all know very well by now. Um, it's been uh, it's been a busy month. It's been a difficult month. And as usual, all our thoughts go out to everybody who's having a tough time at the moment with the, the worldwide COVID situation. Uh, we've been keeping business as usual as best we can, but we recognize that people are touched in different ways by this. So best of luck to you if you're going through troubles at the moment. But thank you for your continued support on, on this. So Aparna, a busy week, a busy month in the world of Cardano. What's been happening? Right. It does feel like a week, Tim. So no blame, no blame on that one. Um, yeah. You know what? Actually, let's address the big topic here. We are here really for Shelley, right? So this monthly update is for our community to understand where we are in Shelley. And I'm not going to talk about it right now, but Kevin, during Kevin's segment, who is responsible for the node, we will definitely be touching on that. So just uh, you know, keep tight, guys. We'll be getting there. Um, so what's been happening this past month? Wow, so there's quite a bit. And let me just talk about four of the major areas. And it's gonna be pretty exciting for a lot of people because of the progress we've made in many of the different areas since the last time we were here, uh, March 31st. So there is obviously overall work that's been done on the PwC workshop, so the overall strategy for Cardano, which not only includes the vision, but setting up the roadmaps, uh, setting up this continuous delivery platform for features that are allowing for more parallel work streams on the roadmap. So instead of the whole era-based roadmaps, you know, I talked about how we would become more agile and have more innovation and more features that keep coming out. And that's been happening. Byron was obviously one of the areas we, we hit pretty well and uh, we were successful with the whole reboot and uh, Deadless, the flight concept, getting a lot of the community feedback in there and doing the whole flight area. Darko is going to be touching a little bit about that and we've done an excellent job there and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the tech support piece of that as well. Now you're going to see that this highly committed IOHK group of people that are working on Cardano um, we'll be touching base with our community a lot more, especially through these updates. So you guys will get dates, what we're working on, the as a state of our roadmaps, but also Charles does his visionary AMAs and he does provide a lot of information there. And from Tim and the marketing and the communication standpoint, we'll be doing a lot of blog posts like Tim, you already, you already do that. Um, the next piece that I want to touch on is the tactical work. So we said we were going to get agile. How are we doing that? Um, so getting all that research and making it into a delivery mode. Byron, like I told you, was the first step of that. Shelly is obviously the second. And we will introduce here on the show our CTO, Roman, and he'll be talking us through how we're doing that for Shelly as well. Um, it is a lot of work. So not only is it Shelly, but we're also looking at Gogan and how we get Gogan up into the mainstream, but also promotion of the underlying USPs of Cardano. And you guys are all fans of this. You, you know what, we're, what our vision is. You know why we're doing this. The whole scientific methodology and evidence-based engineering and how that sets us apart from everything else. So how do we message that? And how do we, how do we show that to the world that, that we, are, we are a force to be reckoned with in that space? And that is a part of the go-to-market planning. And it's a part of the product marketing portions and a part of the Marcom and the media and what you've been doing, Tim. Um, like the work on Cardano.org. Do you want to speak a second on that and, and some of the some of the cool Yeah, stuff? well, I mean, Charles, Charles has mentioned this a few times. We've been collaborating uh, with McCann over the last few months to, I guess, really refresh the brand, refresh the Cardano brand on the one hand, um, but also, and I think equally important, create what we're calling a single source of truth because ultimately, you know, the project has grown organically over a period of years, and yet what hasn't happened is the resources available to the community and the resources available to the developer community as well haven't necessarily kept pace with that. So we've ended up with a situation where really we have a web presence that doesn't represent properly where we are now. So it's been a massive focus for me and my team over the last two or three months really, working with McCann very collaboratively around refreshing the Cardano brand, updating the website, creating new copy, creating new documentation, whether that's technical documentation or more kind of informational documentation for more of the general sort of ADA holder. That's been a massive focus for us over the last couple of months and will continue to be for the next few months as well and ongoing. 
So it's an entirely new process we've been in place. We've got a great relationship going with McCann and working with the Cardano Foundation very closely with those guys as well. And Emergo as well. I mean, it's been very much a collaborative effort. So people can expect to see the fruits of that work in due course as well, as Charles has said. Absolutely, Tim. You, you guys have been doing a great job. So I've been I've been in the trenches with them and, and kind of reviewing and taking a look at some of the work. And I'm so inspired. And I know that you guys will be as well once we're able to unveil it uh, for everybody. So speaking of the community engagement, that's another big piece. Flight, as you know, was uh, pretty much a success and how that how that whole concept took us to production version Deadless. And I just want to I want to give a shout out to our tech support leads. Uh, Victor uh, is our tech support lead and our tech support group has done such a great job. And it's not only tech support, we've got DevOps and QA as well that are that are holding down the front lines when we launch something like a flight program. And I want to just share a quote from one of our users regarding flight. It's, he said, been running flight since launch, new version downloaded and installed, main screens opened up immediately and synced in a matter of minutes. Running Windows, brilliant job team, let's go Cardano. And I've got quite a few of those. So I just want to give a shout out to the team that's really done a great job here. Windows was kind of a problem child for us and, and we, we fixed it in a matter of a few weeks in the number of flight candidates we've done. Uh, Daedalus 1.0.0, we have about 263 tickets that have come in. Already 94 have been solved in the past five days. So there's, we get these reports every day and it's kind of a closed loop feedback with, uh, with the tech support teams, with our groups, with Darko's group. Um, in order to be able to get you guys a better product, uh, bringing in the community feedback. So this is this has been wonderful on that. I hope you guys are seeing this, seeing that as well. And then finally, as I segue kind of into Roman's piece, is setting up the organization. I mean, as as leaders of Cardano, every every portion every portion of what we're doing, it's successful people. It's at the end of the day, in order to get a successful product, it's the underlying organization, the people that that are a part of it. And uh, setting that up, uh, setting the processes for them to be successful, uh, that's all very much a part of our, our DNA at this point. And for example, Tim talked about Cardano Docs and what we're doing there, cleaner documentation. A lot of you guys have asked about it in Reddit threads and some of the others. And what are you guys doing about documentation? You know, where can we where can we see it? There's a lot of cleanup that needs to happen. We know, and we've been taking stock of that, and 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 we're we're putting that together. And you'll see a little bit of that at the end, also with the Drustia what we're doing there with the GitHub repositories. Um, and then also roadmap communications. So you've seen our roadmap. I've told you that we will be doing some changes. We had a user suggest like progress bars on certain things. Love that idea. So we're definitely playing around with how we can communicate this better. Uh, but our focus right now is, is getting Shelly and, and getting you guys Shelly and, and getting the, the platform up and running that way. Um, so piece of that is in delivery stage. And with that, uh, Tim, I'd like to bring on the show our CTO, our new CTO, who now feels like he's been here for years, just like myself, Roman. Hello. Hello, everyone. Nice Roman, welcome. Here. Thank you. So, so Roman, we, we, a partner and I were just talking, of, I think really what we're seeing now in the within IOHK is a, is a professionalizing. It's moving from a project to a product delivery organization. And I think there's been some fairly significant moves in the software side as well. And I think you're obviously a big part of that, both now and going forwards. But before we get onto that, perhaps you can just maybe introduce yourself a little bit to people. You've been with the business a couple of months now, something like that. How, tell, tell us a little bit about how you arrived at IOHK and got involved with Cardano. Okay, so I joined two months ago. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of IOHK. I saw and participated to the Byron Reboot uh, launch. DWS flight launch and uh, my background is uh, I've been an entrepreneur for, for several years now. Uh, I founded three startups. I was CEO and CTO. Uh, I did things from the AR multiplayer, multiplayer games to real-time uh, telemedicine uh, applications. But since uh, two, 2017, I've been uh, involved in two building uh, blockchain-based products. Uh, for customers, including a major uh, international uh, bank. So a key, by, a key part of my uh, focus was uh, reducing complexity of developing on blockchain and encouraging the adoption of public uh, blockchains. Why I joined uh, IOHK, I think um, IOHK is the company leading the blockchain uh, industry in terms of innovation and research. It's very, it's very uh, 
uh, impressive or, or, or smart uh, are the engineers uh, here. Um, I was convinced by uh, Charles' uh, vision, vision to for Cardano to become uh, an open social uh, social finance uh, system. And uh, like Charles, I, I would like to remove gate uh, gatekeepers and uh, build uh, contribute to building a, a more peer-to-peer -peer, uh, world. So what, what, what are your first impressions of, of, of coming into the Cardano project? You must have obviously had an idea from the outside, but, but how, how's it shaping up for you once you're inside it now? I was uh, clearly uh, blown away again by the, the, the competency and dedication of the, of the team. Everyone is uh, very focused, uh, open. Uh, I think uh, I, I think it's uh, the most innovative company I've been uh, involved in, and uh, we were extremely active. I mean, more than 300 uh, public uh, repositories on uh, on GitHub, 3,000 uh, commits uh, this week, if I uh, according to CardanoDates.com. Uh, so it's a it's a very very amazing uh, uh, environment to be in. So our focus at uh, this moment is um, clearly uh, finalizing uh, Shelley implementation uh, in order to release our mainnet, and everyone is uh, focused on on that uh, mainly. Uh, the great achievement for me and for everyone was uh, launching by run reboot and by extension or new Haskell uh, infrastructures. Um, that's uh, the first milestone to to the release of uh, of, uh, of Shelley. And uh, what I was uh, wanting to to say here is that we are also working on Gogan and uh, Voltaire in parallel. Uh, to be releasing that uh, in, a, in a more regularly uh, basis. Um, you can imagine uh, milestones being uh, released uh, way more frequently uh, in the future. So what, is, what are some of the measures? We, we spoke last month with Aparna about the, the kind of increased cadence and the idea of sprints and, and the way that we're kind of managing the software development and delivery process. What are some of the processes that you're putting into place now and also focusing on in the near future to continue kind of improving our, our delivery? So we are pu pushing for uh, agile uh, development with a uh, B-weekly release cadence for uh, most of our components. And um, we are going to work on uh, defining and specifying uh, early milestones uh, every quarter, for example, uh, but way ahead of time so everyone can align uh, better. Uh, that's what we, we are we are trying to put in place uh, right now. So we'll continue to bring uh, new talents to the company because uh, this is a very impressive work and uh, the goals are, are very uh, uh, high. Uh, so we need uh, we need uh, talents to join. And um, I mean we have a lot of work and we are going to release. And I think. Uh, Everyone will be surprised by by what we are going to release uh, this year. Good, good. Well, Matt, thank you very much for, for joining us. Sorry you can't have longer with you today. We're stuck a little thank bit. Thank you. Time. We'd love you to come back and, and tell us more maybe next month and, and give us a regular update. So thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks. Okay. So that was uh, Romain, in case anybody was wondering on the pronunciation. Romain, I think, is the way that, uh, that you say his name. Um, I've been doing the American thing, Tim. I've been saying Roman and Butch. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't. I don't think he minds, but I, I just like putting on the French accent. You know, hey, it's just me. Um, okay, so next up, um, one of the other pieces of news uh, this past month, which a lot of you uh, responded to, um, was around our c code audit, the security code audit that we uh, that we delivered, and we shared that with you. As you know, we try and be as transparent as we can as a business, as a project. Uh, and so that was something that we shared publicly with everybody. But a few questions came up and we thought, uh, let's get Charles, uh, different Charles this time. This is Charles Morgan, uh, who is our director of cybersecurity. And we thought, let's get Charles on directly and, uh, and ask Charles. So Charles, we, um, we do formal methods. We use peer reviews, papers. We have some of the, the foremost scientific experts in the world helping us build Cardano. Why do we need to bring somebody else in for, for an external code audit? What's, what's it all about? That's actually a really good question. 
Um, it's pretty much analogous to writing an essay. Um, when you're really familiar with your own writing, uh, it's very easy to overlook what you have written. It's easy to miss the mistakes. You, your mind knows what you wanted it to say, what you wanted it to do. Um, and this really kind of carries over to what we see in the coding world as well. Uh, and it's really important to get the fresh eyes in there. Use fresh eyes, take a look at the code that don't have a vested interest in that particular code base, but have the expertise. Uh, you couple that with uh, some automated tools to help them see the overall big picture of how everything fits together. And you're gonna find most all of those issues. And uh, it's, it's really the smart and uh, responsible thing to do. If we're putting something out that controls people's money for investments, we wanna make sure that their money is as safe as we can make it. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's an awful lot of internal work that goes on as well. Perhaps just paint a little bit of picture of how the two kind of join together and how they how they work together to kind of deliver the results that we want. Okay, uh, are you talking more about our internal processes as well? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, I guess we do internal auditing to a degree and there's... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we really have multiple layers uh, of the way that we do audits. First, we have a, a team that's led by uh, Professor Vasilis Zikas. Uh, he's a researcher in security and privacy. He's also the vice, uh, vice director of the Blockchain Technology Laboratory at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, he leads a team that does a almost continuous routine in-depth audit on everything that comes out of development. They're looking for the way that we're uh, implementing the code as compared to the formal uh, methods and proofs that we have written. And it just basically makes sure that everything that we're doing is is basically mathematically proven. So we're going from the formal proofs to the code. Yes, it's implemented correctly. We're making sure the cryptography is in place. Okay. After it comes out of there, of course, we have our QA team who's going to do uh, functionality testing on every little incremental release that's coming up, making sure that our end users are going to have a good experience with what they're running as far as not having an issue with clicking on a button and not working for them uh, or anything like that. And then of course, uh, after that, we have another uh, audit that's led uh, by my team. And what we do there is we actually take a look at all of the pull requests that have been against open issues. We look at outstanding issues that might still be out there that we haven't had a chance to address yet. And we take a look at any other additional functionality that's been added since the last uh, real uh, audit that we've done, since the last major audit that we've done. And so we can get a good feel that what we're going to push out on an incremental release is good. And then after that, that's where we really come into the idea of having uh, the external third party audit when we're going to do a major release out to our, our end users and our um, partners and everything, we want to make sure that what we put out the door is as good as it can possibly get. And I guess the, the Byron reboot was a very significant release in its own way, and Shelley will be an even more significant release. So one of the things that came up is this difference between static and dynamic testing. I understand that was static testing with the Byron reboot. Well, t tell us a little bit about that and how that's shaping up. Okay. Uh, static and dynamic testing is, is basically what is being audited, okay? It, it all pertains to the same code base. With static analysis, you have experts in the programming languages taking a look at the way the code is written and the way that it is called, uh, the, the routines that are used, everything from how uh, your keys are managed, memory space is managed and everything, but it's really looking at it static. So think of it, you know, you could almost look at it, print it on a piece of paper, that's what, what you're auditing. When you get into dynamic audits, that's where it gets to be a little bit more interesting. They're not only taking a look at the static portion of it, they do that initially to make sure they've got a grasp of how the system is supposed to be working. And then on top of that, they actually start up live nodes. They start up their own network, their own, uh, basically their own test net. So they, they can attack it very much like a hacker would. They try and do penetration testing. They look for vulnerabilities. They uh, look for uh, resi uh, resistance to uh, DDoS attacks, things like that. So. The dynamic audit's really more of a real world, this is how it you know, runs in the wild. This is what our uh, end users can expect and this is how we make sure it's really safe. And I guess that's what we're probably heading towards for Shelley, is it? There's another audit on the way, what's happening with that? 
Absolutely. We've got uh, one that we're actually have got uh, requests out right now for proposals uh, to get a good grip on. And we're expecting that to probably be coming out. So far, we're expecting that audit probably take somewhere between two and three months. And we're actually waiting for a particular piece of the code base to get done right now. And it has to do with the peering uh, selection in, in the uh, nodes. So once we have that uh, in place, we'll actually start that next audit. And uh, I take it we're planning to share the results of that as well. Absolutely. Um, the idea behind doing code audits is really, it really helps put out um, uh, a better assurance to our that, that we're putting better product out there. It's, it's having an auditor come in and take a look at what we've done. They're putting their name and the reputation on the line saying that, yes, this is good code. So uh, putting it out there, doing the audits, it's responsible. We don't want, want to keep that transparency going so that they can see this is what was audited. This is what was found. These were the issues. This is how they mitigated them. This is, you know, the auditor's uh, final take on, yes, everything we found has been mitigated. What that does, that transparency is really makes it uh, possible so that people see we're not trying to hide anything under the rug. Uh, we're fixing every issue we find as quick as we can do it, and we're giving them the best product we can. Fantastic. Charles, thanks uh, very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. So from, uh, from security of one type to security of another and wallets. And Deadless. So, Aparna, we've uh, touched on this already, but I thought we'd get Darko back again to maybe give us a bit more of a, uh, a deep dive into how it's going in the world of Deadless. It's a, been a very, um, uh, been a very um, particularly busy few weeks for Darko as well. Hey, Darko. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you doing? Have you, have you been getting some sleep the last few days? Y yeah, yeah. Things are back to normal. It was a very busy month indeed. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we joking aside, we have seen. Um, we have seen an incredible pace, I think, over the last month. Um, what was it, five releases in 25 days, something like that? Uh, yeah, and then yes. a, full, a full release of Daedalus as well, perhaps. Tell us a little bit about uh, the new release of Daedalus, first of all. Yes, so we have five release candidates, or five candidates for Daedalus 1.0 release, and then the final release, all in 25 days. And we also produced a lot of supporting content. So every release had release notes, and then we made instructional video on installation and wallet migration and support portal articles. And I would really like to thank everyone who worked on Daedalus, uh, especially Daedalus team led by Nico. Nico did an amazing job. And special thanks to Amy and Junko, who did a lot of last minute uh, copy, proofreading, and translation. And they, they were amazing. Yeah, we were iterating very quickly. And this is really a testament to the quality of our new code base. So, yes, very, very busy month. And, uh, and, and a very successful one as well. You, you must be, I mean, you must be delighted. It's, it's been a long it, time coming. Yeah, yeah. So we were waiting for this for many, many years. And uh, the, the, the rewrite was uh, uh, done by, for 18 months. It was a very successful release. So uh, the numbers uh, confirm this. So we had 2,500 unique downloads for Daedalus 1.0 and only 268 support portal tickets. Uh, to, as a comparison, like with major releases of Daedalus previously, we had thousands, uh, even 2,000 uh, tickets uh, with major version released. And um, a lot of these uh, tickets were actually for unsupported versions of, of the operating systems. Unfortunately, Windows 7 and 8.0 are not supported. Users need to have Windows 8.1 or newer to, to run Daedalus. And uh, it's not a very good idea to run um, that, uh, that also an unsupported version of Windows is just not secure. So basically, we only have a handful of issues, and issues are uh, some users uh, cannot complete synchronization, and th this is already fixed uh, in the upcoming 1.11.0 version of the Cardano node, and that will be released the next version of those. Some people um, have uh, connection issues, and this is mostly due to firewalls running uh, from university networks or uh, offices which, which have, like, uh, strict network rules. So basically, like very, very good results, um, only a handful of issues. Very successful release indeed. So I mean, the, 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 flight, the flight release program, the Deadless flight release program must have, must have played its part here. Um, how has that fitted into the overall kind of release cadence and, and how you've been approaching Deadless as a product? Yeah, I think the flight was the key to success of Deadless. Um, 
we had 2,000 unique downloads for fraud candidates, and with, with only 100 support tickets, we managed to re basically resolve all major issues. The other connecting issues, network uh, synchronization issues, crashes issues, we solved all of them before releasing uh, one of uh, to, to, to everyone. And uh, we'll continue to uh, have uh, Daedalus fight releases. Uh, like, let me just cover how Daedalus release process will uh, look going forward. Uh, uh, one O was uh, a bit specific because we wanted to have Cardano node and Cardano wallet as a completely new written dependencies out in the wild in testing for a while. So uh, it took us 25 days to reach the final version, and we were actually adding new features, uh, which will not be the case going forward. So uh, in Daedalus, we have two week development cycles or sprints, and uh, the the next the, the current sprint is ending uh, this Sunday, and we will be creating a new Daedalus release on Monday. And uh, we will take two days for QA, even though the development process is embedded in our QA is the embedded in our development process. We'll take two days to do the QA, and we will release uh, Daedalus Flight 110 um, on Wednesday. And then, based on the feedback, as soon as we are confident, we are releasing on Monday. With the exception of Fridays, uh, we never release uh, mainnet versions on Fridays, because then the weekend is coming. If you, and if there is a major issue, we cannot really. Um, uh, we would like to avoid working on weekends if possible. And if people have already installed a previous version of Dallas Fly, I guess they'll get the alert that there's a new version to download directly through the news feed inside. Is that yeah. right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that part of the inspiration, we've talked about this before, but part of the inspiration for Dallas Flight was what we saw with the ITN and how incredibly powerful it is when you kind of bring the community into a into a testing program to really put stuff through its paces. What What kind of other plans do you have to extend this this, you know, bringing the community into the development of Daedalus longer term? Yeah, this is a very good question. So uh, the idea is to really become an open source project. Daedalus is open source project because the source is, uh, is out there and it's free to use. Uh, but the, the flight is just the first step in opening our development process to the community. Flight opened the QA part of our release process, so people are helping us test the software. But we will be also be opening development uh, and code contribution. So we'll prepare uh, specifications and user interface designs for new features which are not urgent to be implemented. And then we will ask community to uh, help us with code con contributions. We already had code contributions on our React Polymorph project, which is our UI library we are using for Daedalus. And we hired a, de a developer who contributed the most there. So I cannot promise anything, but we will be hiring a new developer in for Daedalus team very, very soon. So maybe that, that's a great opportunity to help us and also maybe to start working for IRHK. Fantastic. OK. So just to finish, uh, Darka, I don't necessarily want you to give away any uh, any great secrets. Let's let's save some more stuff for next month. Anything you can tease with this What might be coming next in the Daedalus roadmap you can tell us about now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll be having a lot of uh, discussions in uh, about the roadmap in the future. But the next major re uh, feature coming to Daedalus is definitely hardware wallet support. And that's uh, both Ledger and Trezor. So, our next uh, development cycle is beginning on Monday, and we'll build a prototype for hardware wallet support. And if we uh, find that uh, we have all required pieces, uh, we will have it relatively soon, and we'll be able to announce it relatively soon. So watch up right. for news um, with Daedalus, and hardware wallet support is coming real soon. Fantastic. Lots to look forward to. Darko, thanks as ever. We'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Darko. Okay, Great. Anna, should we, uh, should we talk about how we test nets? Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can get uh, Kevin onto uh, onto the screen now. He should be uh, should be arriving. Here he comes. Kevin was having a few um, connection problems earlier. I'm not sure whether he was just playing with us just to keep the suspense going longer and longer. But hopefully, Kevin will be able to join us soon. Here we go. Hi. Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> So welcome, welcome. So Kevin, a few of you may have uh, come across Kevin before. Kevin actually uh, pushed out a blog piece today, which I hope some have had a chance to read already, really just taking us through the steps and the three different test net stages that we'll be sort of traveling on on the road to Shelley. But um, Kevin, perhaps just for the sake of people who haven't seen that blog post yet, you just want to briefly summarize. And then I'm going to leave it to you, uh, to you and Aparna to have a chat and, and talk a little bit more about what's going to be happening over the, uh, over the weeks ahead. Tell us a little bit. Tell us. Summarize what was in your blog piece about that. Yeah, so of, thank you, Shane. Okay. Thanks, Tim. You've, you've kind of stolen my thunder because the key message is there are going to be three phases. 
And <laughs> the first phase is going to be a friends and family phase. Uh, we're going to be inviting um, some people we know, um, some stalwarts of the ITN community chosen to uh, carefully select criteria uh, to join us, to get things up and running, to, to kick the tires, um, test out the documentation, and make things ready uh, for the world. And then what we're going to be doing is to open up to a public test net. Uh, anyone will be able to join in that. Uh, this will be a chance for pool operators, for example, uh, to test out their parameters. It'll be a chance for everyone to try out all the uh, new Daedalus Explorer and other features that we'll be producing uh, at that point in time. And the third phase is very important for anyone who has been delegating onto the ITN. Uh, this is the balance check phase when we take stock of all the rewards you've earned uh, through your delegation and staking, and we transfer these over uh, to the main net so you, so you can uh, join them up with your existing rewards accounts. Great. So Kevin, let's uh, let's give them what they're asking for in terms of the first phase. The date. The date. Ah, the, this is one of the most um, secret pieces of information <laughs> the company yeah. has upon it. Are you sure I should give them the date? Do they don't want? Uh, of course they want it. Come on, let's go. Let's, let's go. Maybe. Okay, the date. The date. It's going to be May the eleventh. So, so what is exactly just over happening? a week from now, we will be done upon it. Oh, I was just going to say, Kevin, so just I'm sorry. Over a week from now. You have some communication. There's some lag. I'm sorry. Just wondering. So what's going on at May 11th? Let's okay. tell the community. Okay. So this will be rolling out the friends and family test net. Uh, the uh, live... Uh, Shelly Node will be letting uh, the first group of pioneer pool operators loose onto the test net, and we'll be starting to uh, work things up in terms of the features of the node. And over a period of a few weeks, uh, we'll be working through a test program uh, where we'll be systematically trying out everything out. We'll be checking out the network. Uh, we'll be uh, seeing where, how far uh, things can scale, doing all kinds of tests, just to make sure everything's absolutely ready for people to use the public test net. The testing and the feedback that we get do open up to the public. Uh, we've got the majority of the feedback already built in. And that is similar to the flight program. It's also similar to what we heard from the ITN feedback from a lot of our stake pool operators, a lot of the feedback we got there that people did like the rollout approach. So we're doing that just to ensure that when we get to Shelly Mainnet, that we have uh, pretty much every single sort of possible feedback loop from the community built into it. So hopefully you guys are excited, May 11th for the friends and family. So Kevin, let's dig a little deeper into some of the so it's just some of the logistics of what's going to happen. Go ahead, Great. take it over. Yeah, a presentation uh, with you that we've prepared. So hopefully you can all see that on screen. So what I'm going to do is to tell you a bit about the uh, road to Shelley. As Yeah, so about a month ago, where we were, we were running Byron. We had the Byron SL code that we've been running uh, for quite quite a while. And then we went through the Byron reboot uh, just about a month ago. What's going to happen going ahead is we're going to take the Byron reboot, we're going to go through a hard fork on the Haskell code, and we're going to end up in the Shelley era. And the way we're going to do this is essentially going to be by evolving uh, the Haskell Byron Reboot code. So we're not. this is not going to be a complete rewrite the way that Byron Reboot is. Rather, what's going to happen is we're going to add in some features and capabilities. So at the moment, we're at a stage where we have federated block production, simple transactions. And where we're going to, we're going to have decentralized block production. We're going to have delegation, staking, and rewards. 
We're going to have transactions with metadata, multi-signature transactions, and the treasury. And it's going to open up all kinds of exciting possibilities. The way we're going to do that is we've now, in the Byron reboot, got a number of components. So we have a networking code. We have a consensus layer running BFT, BFT protocol. Uh, we have a ledger co uh, component running uh, Byron ledger rules, command line interface, database, client API. And we're about to put in something called the hard fork combinator. And that's a piece of magic. So what the hard fork combinator is going to let us do is essentially the kind of trick we pulled with Byron, which is that we are going to be running the Byron reboot code. And magically, in real time, we will flip a switch. And gradually, nodes will come online that are running Shelly era block production. So within a very short space of time, we'll go from running Byron era nodes to running Shelly era nodes, nodes live on the main net. And you won't even notice. It will just happen. You'll be then instantly able to uh, delegate, uh, et, cetera, et cetera. And obviously, there'll be a few things that we need uh, to do to do that. So there's been a lot of work going on in the background by the Node team, particularly uh, implementing new Preos protocol, implementing new ledger rules for Shelly, extending various components, incorporating uh, transaction metadata. But it's not just about the Node team. It's also about all the other teams uh, that are part of the Cardano uh, community. So it's about uh, Daedalus. It's about the Explorer. It's about the new Addressdeer client API libraries for exchanges. Uh, and it's about connecting everything up with the world. So this is what we're going to be doing in brief. We will have two phases of the Haskell Shelley testnet. We're going to launch with a boot going into the pioneer phase, a relatively small number of pool operators, reboot that, and go into the public phase. In the public phase, what we'll be doing is we'll be testing out um, all the user-facing components, wallet, et cetera. In the pioneer phase, what we'll be doing is we'll be checking that everything that's important to stake pool operators is up, ready, and running for you. In parallel with that, we'll continue to run the mainnet, uh, the Byron reboot code, then gradually add in more Shelly features up to the hard fork, go into the Shelly era. And as we go into the Shelly era, there'll be gradual decentralization. Uh, OBFT will continue on some nodes for a while. It will be gradually phased out. And eventually, it will become completely decentralized and completely Shelly. And the third strand is the ITN. That's going to continue for the time being up to the point of the balance check. And that's going to happen just before the hard fork. So you'll know the hard fork is coming, guys, when we start to do the balance check, because then we'll be in a position to transfer stuff over to the main net and to move roll forward uh, to the Shelley era. So to give you a bit of more detail, um, here on the test net, pioneer phase, uh, what we're doing, generating keys, starting nodes, registering pools, registering stake keys, staking fake ADA, uh, and testing the transactions. We'll be running Shelly-only blocks uh, with VRF crypto and force it to generate the fake ADA. And then when we go to the public test net, we'll be looking not only at the stake pool side, but also the wallet CLI, uh, the Explorer Daedalus, the address to client API, uh, we'll be testing out the hard fork combinator in the test net before we go live on the main net, generating Shelley and Byron era blocks to let us do that, and with additional crypto security built in. So this will be as close to the real thing as we can get. I'll just stop sharing my screen, Tim. So thanks, uh, Kevin. Let's let's talk a little bit about the ITN because there is a portion that we do the balance check and bring them on board into uh, into Shelley's Haskell version. So you were involved with the ITN. We've done a lot of uh, retrospective on feedback from the ITN that we've uh, mitigated, and we're trying to build into this for, into this uh, into this Shelley. So can you give us some of the top areas, Kevin? Yeah. Top so so we've accumulated a huge amount of feedback. So lots of detailed feedback. 
uh, on the rewards mechanism, uh, lots of feedback on uh, how the network works. But I think the greatest lesson uh, to us has been how fantastic a community we have. Uh, so the community has been incredibly supportive, very, very helpful. Um, they've put together some fantastic guides uh, that have helped us understand uh, how the Cardano um, ecosystem works. And we're very, very much looking forward uh, to working uh, with them uh, going forward to the Haskell testnet and into the mainnet. Uh, and the other key lesson from the ITN was that how important it was to bring together all the teams from IOHK, from the Cardano Foundation, and from Emergo. So I can confidently say that as a result of the ITN, we are now working as one well-oiled machine to deliver Shelley for you. So Kevin, we've 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 had a couple of a uh, couple of questions here. Maybe we can just take a couple of these now, if that's if that's possible. So we've had a question here from um, ODOZ or Odoz. Uh, not quite sure which one. Uh, so after Shelley, will stake pools continue to be registered by the Cardano Foundation? I think a few people in the past have been slightly concerned that this is a potential point of centralization. But I understand with the ITN, it was really just a sort of a pragmatic decision to to have them manage it. How how will how will stake pool registration work on the main net? So, so when we get to the mainnet, um, stake pool registration will be entirely on-chain, Tim. So the Cardano Foundation will not be involved in registering uh, stake pools at all. You'll be able to come along and register yourself in a fully decentralized way. Uh, we have had requests uh, for um, maintaining uh, stewardship of pools. Uh, pool identities, tickers, uh, are, have been a particular concern. So what we're looking into is providing um, groups of whitelist servers, which you may choose to um, to read from. And uh, one of these will be run by the Cardano Foundation. Basically, uh, the pools are on this list. They were ones uh, the, the, that participated in the ITN. So when you come to stake your ADA on the main net, you know you're going to still be staking it uh, with the people who ran the uh, the pools on the test net. So you think that's a fair thing to do. So, but pools so, to run, so, so sorry, go on. I was going to say, but anyone will be able to run their own list. You won't have yes. to take the Cardano Foundation list. But, but pools who've established a little bit of an identity and a little bit of a customer base, I suppose, on the ITN will be able to sort of maintain their ticker uniqueness going forwards on the mainnet. Yes, we think that's, that's very important to yeah. maintain this continuity as we go from uh, ITN through testnet into the mainnet. Yeah. We've also had a couple of questions here. I think we've seen a, these questions a lot. I'm not sure how much you can answer at this stage, but we've had a question here about the, um, the values of the K parameters, for example, and also the uh -huh. amount of pledge. Is there anything you can answer on either of those at this stage? So I, I can't tell you about the precise value of the K parameter because we've got a meeting on Tuesday when we're going to be discussing it. Uh, we have had a lot of feedback on where we should set it. Uh, the, the way it worked on the ITM was, was very interesting. Uh, we were expecting that uh, the number of pools would stabilize around the K parameter. And actually what we uh, noticed was that it stabilized around 2K. So we ended up with more pools are than we were expecting. So we're going to be taking that into account. Um, choosing that parameter is going to be quite important because if we set it um, too low, then we don't get enough decentralization. But if we set it too high, then it's not going, it's going to mean that people can't maintain a viable staking business. So we're going to be looking at that very, very uh, carefully so that we get that exactly right as, as we go forward. And this is something that we can, we will certainly be testing in the test nets. One of the great things for the test nets is that we'll be actually be able to vary that. So with the ITN, uh, we started off with one setting and for technical reasons, we couldn't vary it very easily. And once we had started running, we felt it wasn't a good move to vary it even when we could, but we will be able to test that much more thoroughly in the two test nets that I've mentioned to you. Great. Uh, so we've also had that question around pledging. Perhaps you just want to explain yeah. very briefly. People may hear the word pledge a lot, but not be totally familiar with what it is. It's really a core part of the, uh, the, the way the system will work, won't it? Perhaps you can explain a bit more about pledging and where our thinking is at the moment on that. Sure. So essentially what, what pledging is, is, is a way for um, pool owners uh, to show uh, their backing for the pools that they're running. So pool owners and operators 
will put forward a certain amount of stake uh, to back their pool when it's created. This is the pledge. Uh, and you will be able to see the amount that's been pledged for each of the pools. Now, when it comes to rewards, um, we will require the pool owners to honor the pledge that they've made. If they don't honor the pledge, nobody will get any rewards for the pool in that epoch. So it's incredibly important uh, that when you put a pledge amount on, you're actually going to honor it and uh, that it's there at the end of the epoch so that everyone gets the rewards. Otherwise, people will just lose out. And that's not, you're going to have some very unhappy um, stake uh, delegators. Okay, great. Kevin, thank you very much um, for coming on. So, something tells me you might be uh, coming on <laughs> again next month uh, and, uh, and fairly regularly, I would imagine. But uh, it's been great to have you on to introduce us at least to this. And as we say, May the 11th, uh, we're going to be kicking off the, the friends and family test net and getting our first pioneers on. Uh, so we'll be also be starting inviting some of those state pool operators who we've effectively, we've used a better set of criteria ultimately, haven't we, Kevin, to try and identify a bit of a mix of technical skills and a few other things. Maybe just touch on that briefly before we end. Oh, uh, well, we're trying, we're trying to get uh, a broad mix of operators. So we obviously need people who have familiarity with running systems. We, we want to include some experienced stake pool operators, uh, but we also want to select operators from different backgrounds. We need to select them from different geographical areas. That's going to be incredibly important. We've got a whole list of criteria, uh, including, well, we want some, we want to have some people who are professional pool operators. We want some people who are running uh, from something closer to a home environment, just so we can test out all, all the different things. In, in that uh, in that setting too. Um, and one thing I didn't say before, I hope, hope you can yeah. give me a minute or two, is um, although although you may not be selected to be in the initial group of pioneers, we will be expanding that out, but also we'll be making things completely open. So you'll be able to play along with us. You'll be able to pick up the code, look at the documentation, try things, try things out, see exactly what we're seeing as we run the test net. The goal is not to be exclusive with this. We're just uh, focusing our efforts to make sure that we can bring Shelley out as quickly as we possibly can and deliver the maximum benefit to everyone. Great. So friends and family test net, May the 11th kickoff, a little yeah. bit of fiddling under the hood, bit of documentation, and then hopefully as soon as possible after that, more and more state pool operators and we'll be motoring. We will be, we will be motoring. Thank you, Kevin. We'll see you again Thank you. soon. Thanks very much. Great. Okay. Um, so there we have it, uh, the kickoff of the Friends and Family Testnet and really the, the beginning of the Testnet journey towards uh, Shelley Mainnet. So very, very exciting times ahead over the next few weeks. Um, so we are now going to invite somebody else back on who we had last week who, who introduced us to um, Adrestia. Adrestia is the, um, the set of libraries and APIs that will uh, allow Cardano to be more um, an exchange and third-party wallet uh, set of APIs and libraries that we can use to, to start to help with Cardano adoption and implementation. So I'm going to invite Nick Nafak back onto the call, who's been leading for this uh, this project for us. Um, so let's invite Nick, Nick, Nick Nafak in here. So Nick is accepting and connecting. Here he comes. Nick. Hey. Hi, Tim. Welcome back. Welcome back. So you uh, you introduced us to Adressia last month. Um, and I think you're live now, aren't you? Is that right? Byron Reboot was effectively Adressia live? That's right. We are live for all of our libraries and APIs um, in Adressia right now as of um, more than 10 days. So it's very exciting. So maybe you just want to give a very quick reminder to everybody of what address your ears who'd missed it last last month or who hasn't read up about it so far? Absolutely. Yeah, address is essentially a modular SDK, which allows you to uh, essentially do several things. But primarily, if you happen to be a wallet developer or an exchange developer or any other developer for that matter, um, think of it like a toolkit that will allow you to create, uh, sign, serialize, and submit transactions, for example, in addition to offering access to other libraries uh, to use things like batch 32 uh, to encode things more efficiently. So all in all, it's really a, a great toolbox that we're putting together and should help a lot of developers in the community connect with the Cardano core node more easily. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit more about some of those features and exactly how they're going to be used. Absolutely. 
Right now, we are focused on essentially doing a few things. We are trying to make it much easier for the developer population to understand how to install, configure, and run uh, essential pieces of these libraries and APIs and improve and create a consistent document documentation environment. So for example, uh, for installation, we are offering Docker Compose files that make it easy to download, install, and run things very quickly so that you can get up and running as a developer. So I think you were going to try and give us a demo. Is that something you can, you can pull off on your screen now? Uh, let's see. Here we go. OK, is everyone able to see my command line? Looks good. OK, great. So this is a great example where I downloaded the core node, essentially. Uh, took me about two minutes. And with one line, I'm able to, to run that node locally on my local host. And you can see it starting up right now. This is great. It used to take a pretty good amount of time to build and install and create all the, uh, the dependencies. Uh, we have other methods as well, but this has just been a really seamless way to do it. So it's just a great example of you know, how we've made it easier. Outside of just running you know, something like the core node, we, we've created Docker Compose files. And here's in one line what that Compose has done for Cardano REST, for instance. And Cardano REST is a chain exploring API that also could be used uh, in conjunction with other libraries to uh, create sign and submit transactions. But it's just one of the pieces. But its primary purpose is chain exploring. But here you see that with one single Docker Compose line, I essentially install all the components and subcomponents that I need, even Postgres. Uh, and then I'm able to really just have that on my local host and you know, configure it and get it running. So this is really exciting for developers to have uh, an easier and faster way. In addition, we also have the Addressia user guide, which is now in the repo that provides you know, a great overview of what Addressia is with respect to the roadmap. It covers all of the APIs and corresponding libraries that you can use. Uh, again, if you want to create your own wallet, you can use these libraries. If you want to use the Cardano wallet to manage UTXOs for you, you can do that as well. Uh, if you want to submit a transaction, you can do that. If you want to assemble a transaction, you can create and, and sign that transaction as well. So we have a lot of nice tools for people to use. There's also a, a good contrast between uh, what's end of lifing for SL and kind of some corresponding elements if you're an exchange, which will replace that. We also have created nice use cases here as well that if you would like to create a wallet with a nice difficulty level to make it simple and straightforward to simply just make a post. This links to a swagger, which is quite nice as well if you write code, because it makes it pretty straightforward to understand uh, what the requests and, and responses look like, what attributes are supported, and the different forms of, of errors that you might have to handle as a developer. So we're constantly improving this. And in, we're adding new use cases all the time. We'll be adding a use case for exchanges that are on SL. And we'll also be adding use cases for creating your own wallet with the libraries. But lots of great stuff here. In addition, there's some, there's some key concepts that you can uh, read through. There's a great summary of the overall uh, architecture, uh, which for the core node and address you, so that you can have a sense for you know, how the pieces fit together, whether you're doing some blockchain exploration through something like GraphQL, or you simply just want a wallet to uh, use so that you don't have to write your own UTXOs and just post to it through uh, Cardano Wallet. But it's all here, and we're trying to make it easier uh, for every uh, developer that wants to integrate with Cardano. And I guess if, uh, do you have sort of additional support channels and stuff with this exchange, exchanges or app developers who need sort of additional, uh, additional support? We do. In fact, for any support item while you're running a, uh, an attempt to integrate, you can simply leave a, an issue in the uh, respective GitHub re repository, our team will respond to you right away. We also have a, a Telegram channel that you know we'll be including in our, our FAQs so that people can you know leave feedback, uh, get feedback, and get help. Uh, again, I would encourage you to go to GitHub 
And if there are any problems or things that you have, you can click up here on the issues tab. It's pretty simple to create a new issue and our team will get on it right away. Brilliant. Nick, thank you very much. So I guess if there's any um, exchanges or wallet developers out there, um, Mackie's put the link at the bottom there where you can find the address to your user guide. There's also GitHub, GitHub uh, resources that people can access. And you know we'll be hearing uh, more from uh, the address to your team in due course. So Nick, thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. Yep, thanks, Tim. And thanks to everybody in the Cardano community. Thanks for supporting us. And uh, thanks for everybody else on the project. Wouldn't, we wouldn't be here without you. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. OK, so Pana, um, we've got a little bit of time left. Wow, look at that, four minutes. We've got time for some questions. Should we have a little look at what we've got here? Yeah. Aha, here's a good one. Here's a good one. So look, I mean, what's the estimated delta between the release of Shelley and Gogan? Uh, probably the most common type of question we get is obviously around the cadence and releases, and it's always the old, you know, when Shelley uh, joke, as it were. Um, Perhaps you just want to reiterate a little bit about what our methodology and what our approach is, because as we said at the beginning of the call, it's it's matured significantly over the past few months and over the past year, really. And the Byron reboot has really marked a, a whole new way of doing things. Perhaps just rather than answer that question specifically, you can just talk a little bit more generally about how we're developing and how we're pushing stuff out to market now. Absolutely. You guys heard from Ramon in, in terms of the delivery organization and how we're becoming a little more agile. So what does that mean? That means, as you can see, the Shelly getting rolled out when it finally does do a feature complete portion of Shelly. It's not like Gogan starts. It's not going to be in a sequential format. We're already working on Gogan. So we're not we're working on Shelly. We're working on Gogan. We're working on a couple of other projects that Charles has, has mentioned a little bit about in his AMAs. And as uh, you know, just come to these updates every month, guys. I mean, we'll definitely update you on, on dates, as you can tell. Like today, we want to share these things with you. It's not like we don't want to. Uh, we just want to be sure of what we're what, what's coming out and when it's coming out and, and uh, how we're going to message it to the community. Um, we really don't want to create expectations that we don't meet. And that's a part of the product team at this point is ensuring that the scope is right and giving you guys chunks of, uh, of features that we can test. And then finally, when we get to mainnet, it's going to be well tested and put together in a, in a, in a way that everybody's, that benefits everybody. So yeah. uh, the Delta between Shelly and Gogan, you know, I'm not gonna comment on that right now, but I will, I will tell you that we are working on it right at this point um, and putting it in a format that we'll share pretty soon in the roadmap. Yeah. So we've got a couple of questions here also around um, education particularly. So we've had a couple of questions on the progress of uh, MOOCs around uh, Plutus. We've actually got a new Marlowe playground now that you can have a try. We can put a link in our social media for that this week so that you can get access to that and have a go with that. There's also quite a couple, good couple of videos that, um, that Simon has, has shot actually for the University of, of uh, Colorado. So we'll share those videos as well, which give you a little bit of an idea about the progress on Marlowe and Plutus, which is, is you know, as I say, it's kind of come out of the limelight a little bit in the last few months, inevitably, because we've been so focused on other things. But it, that, that team has really made some amazing progress uh, while we've been uh, sort of busy on our thing as well. So we'll share more about that. We might even try and get Simon in very soon to come and talk a little bit more about the project and, and share some of this. Um, let's have a little bit, bit of a look here. Yeah, we've got a few more things here. Um, exchanges update. Anything you want to take, Aparna? Let's see. So there was one last time that we didn't get to, I don't think. It was regarding, here's one, uh, about a big summit. So this is probably more of a community thing. Right. We had a big summit last year. You were organizing something similar for 2020. So, Tim, do you want to talk about kind of yeah. the situation and where we're going with that? Yeah, so um, we're, we're hard at work now planning our virtual summit. Uh, Charles has mentioned this several times and we'll continue to keep you updated. But again, it's we've really got a sort of a, a multi-function, multi-company team working on this. So we've got people from all three companies kind of planning that. Um, you know, the, the situation in the world at the moment is such that the virtual summit has become the new normal in many ways, but uh, that doesn't change the fact that we really want to do a good job with this. We want to really uh, use it as a showcase for Shelley. Um, so we'll be telling you the date of that virtual summit, obviously in due course. I think the word is soon, but stay tuned. And we will obviously tell you more about that as it happens. But we've got some very exciting plans for that, not only talking about uh, Cardano, but also maybe talking more widely about some of the other work that's going on within the ecosystem and also within the community. You know, we've said several times during this show that we simply wouldn't be where we would be, would we are now with, without the contributor, contributors from the community. So again, we want them to play a very important part of our summit. So more news on that very, very soon. Yeah. Great. Uh, Tim, okay. there's 
for you, actually, if you want to take this. Uh, how do you guys plan to market Cardano to the masses once Shelly and Gogan are deployed? <laughs> well, I've got, well, I've got one minute. Maybe I ought to come back and say a bit more about that. I'll tell you what we can do. Next month, I think we might try and give you a little bit of a sneak preview of some of the work we've been doing on the marketing side, just to just to let people feel and, and see what we, where we're going there. Because there's some exciting work happening behind the scenes. It's not quite ready for prime time yet, but it will be soon. Uh, so, yeah, we'll share a bit more next time on that. Very okay. exciting. Good. Yeah. Well, look, thank you, everybody, for joining us again. Um, a few technical snafus, but I think uh, hopefully you managed to catch most of what we said. Um, I believe we've been streaming live to YouTube for this show, which is the first time. So hopefully more people have seen it. But thank you all for joining. Thank you for your questions. And obviously, if you want to go back and watch the video, uh, it should either be automatically uploaded to YouTube or we'll be on there very soon for you to, uh, to look, look it up. So, yeah, May the 11th, kick off Friends of Family Testnet. Uh, inviting our stakeholder pioneers in there, they'll get everything ready, and then we'll start inviting everybody else on board. So we'll see you uh, see you all very soon. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks, Thanks. everybody. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.